What is going on everybody, it's Stas here and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq. We're also going to be doing a trading update talking about what I did today in the markets as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in October heading into the month of November in 2019 and we're also going to be talking about Tesla stock as it's up another 10% today guys, up another 10% percent and we're going to be talking about briefly whether or not I think it's a short squeeze and hint hint I do think it's a short squeeze but we'll get into that here in a couple of minutes guys and all I ask from you is if you enjoy this video feel free to go down below hit that like button consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me and feel free to join our strive smart discord group chat and our strive smart Facebook group that's how you can be in contact with me and all of the other traders and investors in our community on a day-to-day -day basis. So guys, let's get right into it. Starting off here with the SPX, the S&P 500 index, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. So we can see here, we ended up closing the day up $12.26, up 0.41%. And we finally, I feel like, broke out today, right? We finally broke up today and filled the gap up to that all-time high resistance, which is is at 3027.98 and guys no kidding we got like 55 cents i think it was like 55 58 cents or way you know from that all-time high today if i go to this one day one minute you can see exactly how close we got we hit 3027.39 which again is around 58 cents short 59 cents short of that all-time high we sold off a bit at this point there was still hope that we were going to pop back up but we ended up getting back to that resistance guys and it ended up acting as a strong double top right we double top there that's a strong bearish pattern and uh, from there we ended up dumping and kind of trading within this channel over the next couple of hours as you can see here on my one day one minute chart so overall I'm thinking the SPX right now is pretty bullish because again we broke out of this wedge this ascending triangle which is very bullish and we filled up the gap to that all time high so what I would like to see and I personally think this will happen is you know next week you know I need to see a break above this resistance and for us honestly to get to those all-time highs and watch out for Apple next week guys they do report I think if Apple does well in their report their stock goes up you know that's going to influence the market influence a lot of other stocks and thus pushing us to those all-time highs um, you know that's what I personally think here and let me know down below in the comments what do you guys think about that going to the Dow Jones and industrial average here up 152 points today up 0.57 percent unlike the S&P guys this is not looking bullish quite yet we're still trading in this wedge right you guys can see it we're still struggling to break out and fill up to the all-time high you know like the S&P already did right which makes the Dow still a bit kind of neutral bearish in my personal opinion you know once if this does happen this arrow that you guys see here if we fill up, that's obviously going to be bullish. And of course, if we break that all-time high at around 27.3, 27.4, that would be extremely, extremely bullish as well. So as of now, I'm just simply watching this on the four-hour chart. And if we go to this one day, one minute, you guys can see we started off very strong today. Very, very strong. Hit 27K, tried to hold that level as a new support, but ultimately failed. And uh, really, we closed above one of the critical supports which is you know or we close below rather a critical support which is that 27k so you know watch out for that level 27k you know watch for us to break out of there potentially you know that was a resistance from a couple of days ago I think if we pop you know break 27k break this wedge again we'll be filling up to those all time highs so NASDAQ today guys did exceptionally well up 1.37% here up 108 points and guys this one 
almost hit the all-time high as well. We tested it, 80-50. If we go to this one-day, one-minute, you guys can see we kind of got rejected a bit below 80-50, about 14 points below at around 80-37 to be exact. And that's actually where we are right now in terms of the NASDAQ. And from there, you know, we, we pulled down a bit. Now we're starting to see a bullish cross here. We're breaking out of that 80-36 resistance. So this is a good sign, right? We're about nine points away from the all-time high here on the end. Q, and I think it's very reachable for this upcoming week um, that we do end up exploding out of that and uh, going to new highs, right? Whether that's 80, 60, 80, 70, 80, 100 and above. I think that's very possible for this upcoming week. So overall, guys, that's the market, right? Today was quite a good day. We had a bunch of big stocks do well. You know, Amazon tanked after hours yesterday about 10%. They recovered all the way up. They ate all that gain back up, right? They gapped up like 7-8% today. Pretty, pretty crazy and that's obviously driving um, the NQ here. We have Netflix doing well today. Google did well today. Apple did well today. Three bucks for Apple right in the green. You know, Facebook's doing well today. It did well rather up $1.51. So a lot of these stocks, you know, ended up fueling the NASDAQ. So what did I end up doing today, guys? Well, I didn't really do much um, day trading other than a quick little in and out on Amazon. And I did mention yesterday that um, Amazon was a stock that I was looking to buy, you know, especially after this dip. And I actually did end up buying a little bit in my M1 Finance portfolio, which I'll update you guys on that portfolio in the next couple of days here because I've actually been doing a lot of buying in there and putting more money, you know, into the portfolio, buying some more growth stocks actually. And uh, so I bought Amazon in that, but in my trading account, you know, on the five day, five minute, we'll be able to see it here. You know, I ended up buying in as I started to see, you know, massive push, you know, pre-market hours today and really at market open on Amazon, right? Again, we got that earnings yesterday. You know, we ended up tanking, um, tanking from about 1775 all the way down to about 1618, opening up that 10%, right? I didn't know yesterday. I was thinking to myself, you know, is this going to hold? Is it going to continue to sell off tomorrow, right? If it were to sell off, I would have liked that a bit more, to be honest, because I would have added more, um, you know, in my other accounts, you know, besides my M1 account, you know, I would have added maybe in my in one of my, you know, long-term accounts outside of M1. One, but the fact that we ran up so aggressively, guys, you know, I didn't get that opportunity to buy in any other account but M1 and, uh, you know, in the trading account as well, but in terms of my long term accounts here. And, uh, you know, we got that pop. Got the consolidation 1660 this morning, and then we just had a ridiculous run up on the one day, one minute. You can see here, you know, I ended up just buying in on this dip at about 1700 here. I believe I just bought like two, three shares, nothing crazy, right? And then we started riding that 50 SMA, and honestly, I just held it for a little bit, right? The markets were running, we saw that, and you know, as this started to plateau, you know, that's when I ended up, you know, scaling out of the profits uh, of the position with profits of around 2 to about 2.1%. And if you guys saw my video yesterday, you knew that I was holding some V, um, you know, through the earnings, which I don't really do a lot. But this is one that, you know, I kind of felt confident doing so. So I held half of my position through earnings. I ended up buying in yesterday, actually, at about 174 um like 60 or 70 or something like that. You know, I, I wrote it up for about 1% profit, sold half, and now I'm still actually holding the other half through this weekend, right? I'm holding it through this weekend, hoping for a pop above 180 um, in this upcoming week at some point. If these markets do get that pop to the all time highs, I honestly think Visa and a lot of these other stocks like Amazon too, honestly, will end up doing, um, you know, well here. So Visa, I'm still holding. Holding this one, I'm up like 2% or something like that, 2.5%. So yeah, that's really what I ended up doing. Day traded Amazon, nothing too crazy, about two, three shares there, um, you know, uh, about 2% profit, 1.5, whatever. Actually, no, it was more like 2%. And now I'm holding Visa over the weekend, hopefully going to make some gains on that um, this next week. So as you guys saw in the title, Tesla, yes, Tesla yet again, guys, up 
10%. This is looking like a short squeeze in my opinion. It is looking like a short squeeze, guys. And if you guys do not know what that is, let me pull up my Safari right here and read a quick definition from Investopedia. What is a short squeeze? Well, a short squeeze is a situation in which a heavily shorted stock like Tesla or commodity moves sharply higher, forcing short sellers to close out their positions, their short positions, and adding to the upwards pressure of the stock, right? Short sellers are being squeezed out of their short positions, usually at a loss. Short squeezes are generally triggered by a positive development that suggests the stock may be embarking on a turnaround. So Tesla stock, right? It's been getting crushed. You know, it was at 170 a couple of months ago. You know, a lot of the short sellers were laughing through this point in time, right? And now as Tesla's starting to run back up, as they turned a profit yesterday, now the shorts are like, crap, what are we going to do, right? The stock may run up, and if it runs up, we can lose unlimited amounts of money because when, you, when you're shorting a stock, you can lose an unlimited amount of money. That's the reality of it. So with the stock, you know, having having this pressure to the upside, right? What are the short sellers doing? They're cashing in at a loss and this is providing you know, a lot of stimulus to the stock. And as you guys can see here, although the turnaround in the stock's fortunes may only prove to be temporary, few short sellers can afford to risk runaway losses, like I said, on their short positions and prefer to close the position, even if it means taking a substantial loss. So a lot of these short sellers, they're taking that loss, you know, right? And that's pushing up the stock like crazy as they're buying into this, right? You know, it's flying up, it's squeezing the stock up. And that's what we're seeing right here, right? You guys can see the pop from 250 to 310. Now we're seeing even more push to the upside, right? 296 up to 330. So what do you guys think about this? Short squeeze or no? I personally think, um, again, obviously it is a short squeeze. And if we're looking at some technicals here on Tesla, if we go to this one year, one day, you know, we held 293 yesterday, you know, we squeezed all the way up now above this next one at about 322. So, guys, this is a point where we're in levels that we haven't been at in terms of Tesla stock over the past couple of months. It's literally almost been about a year since we've been at these 320 to 330 levels. Back in, really, February is where we were at these points. So, keep an eye. Are we going to hold this old resistance as a new support? That's kind of what I'm waiting for here on Tesla. The next spot that I can see it running to, if we just pull up some... Um, you know, other levels here, you guys can see 344 is very possible, 348, 350 area. You know, this could be a, a potential resistance, right? If we pull down, hold 322, maybe we can trade this up to 350. But, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be trading Tesla at this point. I'm watching it more. I'm on the sidelines to see what does it do. Does it pull down? Does it, does it continue to squeeze up to 350? You know, I don't want to get into this now. I feel like if you weren't already in this down here in the 240s, 250s, right now trying to get in is kind of like FOMO, fear of missing out. It's kind of a bit too late. So that's just me, right? I'm going to wait. I'm going to see what ends up happening. But nonetheless, I do think this is a short squeeze. Shorts are covering at losses right now to, to, to really, you know, to, to not be caught in a ridiculously red trade. Because and remember, when, 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 when Tesla continues to go up, what's happening to short sellers? Well, you know, they're losing money and they're losing a lot of money. So they're going to keep covering, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, that's just what I think. Let me know down below. What do you guys think about that? Now, let's talk about some stocks very quickly that I'm personally watching. And if you guys actually want me to talk about a specific stock or ETF in Sunday's video, feel free to comment that down below. Comment whatever ticker um, symbol you want, and I'll get to that in Sunday's video. But some stocks that I'm watching, guys, you know, are a lot of the ones that I'm involved in right now. Visa, I'm watching it, right? I'm looking for the potential test at 180. I think if we break 180, this could be a runner up to 185, 187. So I'm watching Visa. Chipotle Mexican Grill is one that's interesting right now. We haven't really found a bottom yet, but we're still kind of hovering around 
around the support of this trend line, which I think if we do end up turning around here, this could be one that fights back up into the 800s, maybe 820, maybe 830. And it actually has a lot of potential of, uh, for profit, you know, even up to that first resistance, which is at 830. It has about a 5.2% profit from there, right? From where we are now to there. Let's say we pop above to 860. We have even more of around 9 to 10%. So I'm watching Chipotle closely. Apple, they're reporting earnings tomorrow, or not tomorrow, next week. You know, I believe it's on the 20 uh, or the 20 or the 30th. Yep, the 30th. I was about to say 29th, but it's on the 30th. This is one that I'm watching, of course, not looking to get in whatsoever. It's overbought, in my opinion. Uh, me getting in now would definitely be a case of FOMO, but still, nonetheless, it's still worth watching, right? If we pull down, maybe hold that 50 SMA, that could be a dip by entry point here, right? PayPal is another one that I'm watching. This is looking extremely bullish right now, in my opinion. This one has the most potential out of anyone in this list. Maybe CMG has, has you know, comparable potential, but, you know, in terms of Visa, I would definitely rather, uh, you know, trade PayPal here just because we're breaking out of the 180 SMA here, right? And we have a lot of potential to those all-time highs at around 122 of around 12%, right? So the fact that we, we broke out of the moving averages here, we pulled down, we held them as a support, right? And we saw a massive break on the five-day, five-minute. You'll be able to see it, right? We consolidated, we popped. This is looking extremely bullish in my eyes and um, yeah this is actually one that I'm looking to buy this upcoming week as a swing trade so you know another one T AT&T guys this is reporting earnings right now I don't know um, or they already did report earnings no I, I swear their earnings were today that's weird um, earnings conference call 1023 that does not sound right but nonetheless I'm watching AT&T um, you know, they are reporting earnings here, whether it's today or the, the next couple of days. Either way, this stock's been doing quite well, right? We're at a dip right now, heading into these er earnings of about 4%. So this is worth watching as a turnaround play. A lot of potential there, in my personal opinion. And um, yeah, that's really it, guys. Of course, I'm watching Amazon as well and all those other tech stocks we mentioned in the beginning of this video. But that's pretty much it, right? If you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me and feel free to go down below into the description box and join our strive smart discord group chat and our strive smart facebook group we have about like 300 members in the facebook group and over 800 members like 850 members in the discord chat and the discord chat guys that's definitely where you need to be if you want to talk to me personally throughout the market day and all of our other members who are very active in that chat and by the way it's 100 100% free of charge. And again, it's linked down below. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.